Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening, uh, our folks from Africa, uh, good afternoon, uh, those who are viewing from, the, from Europe and other colleagues in the United States of America. Uh, I must first start by apologizing uh, that we have started uh, a little bit late uh, due to technical hitches, uh, but we are ready to go. Um, live tonight, uh, we have our guest whom I'm yet to introduce. Uh, but just before I dive into uh, the guest that we have tonight, I would like in a special way to appreciate uh, the Inter-University Organization of, for the Moot Court competition uh, that happened yesterday at Cavendish University. Uh, I want to congratulate all the winners of yesterday's event. Uh, that was such a powerful show uh, by the future legal brains. Um, and I congratulate Cavendish University that managed to emerge the best. And I also congratulate uh, Blessed Mugisha uh, who happened to come out as the best orator. And Tanya Innovation, as I already presented, uh, we are here to help um, close bridges across Africa. And we hope that very soon we shall start having such competitions at the Af on the African continent uh, using uh, such platforms uh, to help you share ideas. So I congratulate you once more. Uh, for the viewers and listeners who are on tonight, uh, I'm happy to let you know uh, that we have our guest tonight, none other than our Professor David Justin Bachibinga, uh, who is with us tonight. Uh, Professor Bachibinga is such an icon, both in the, uh, as a legal scholar, but at the same time as an administrator in line with um, you know, legal principles. And I'm happy that we have him tonight we want to get uh, his experiences um, as an elder in this country, but also as a seasoned person on the African continent. Gone are the days when we wait to uh, get information about people when they are long gone. And I, I'm sure that um, quite many young people will have a story to follow, uh, both in his book that, is, uh, that he has already published, and many other academic writings that he has actually put um, in this country and across the continent. Um, so uh, allow me invite Professor David Justin Bachibinga to just pass some regards and say hello to the viewers and listeners tonight. Professor Bachibinga, very welcome. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Tavingwa, the host of this uh, program. Um, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, um, I'm happy to be here to, uh, these days they use the word share, to share some, uh, uh, let's say some, either some information or uh, inputs uh, on life. Um, briefly, I am uh, a professor of uh, commercial law at Makrede University. Uh, currently, I'm also Secretary General of the Uganda National Academy of Sciences and a member of the Presidential Awards Committee uh, and, of course, an advocate uh, of the High Court here in Uganda. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, Prof, go on. Yes. Uh, now, of course, in terms of who I, I've mentioned briefly who I am, and uh, I would say some of uh, the characteristics peculiar to me uh, is that I tend to be disciplined, uh, result-oriented, uh, uh, but also compassionate, and I care about other people. Uh, we have recently released uh, my autobiography. Mm. Uh, I am normally asked uh, 
uh, what uh, are the highlights <laughs> in this uh, Correct. Mm. Uh, autobiography. Um, basically, I would uh, say there are about uh, three main uh, features of the autobiography. Mm. Uh, first of all, it is a summary of my life achievements to date. Uh, of course, I've not mentioned one aspect <laughs> about my life. That is that uh, next year, I'll celebrate uh, my platinum uh, birthday anniversary. Oh, so I've, I've been, <laughs> congratulations. I've that, been that, around. That's a big one. <laughs> yes, I've been around for some time. Yes. Uh, some people write their autobiographies later. Uh, but there are three main things which motivated me mm. in uh, writing this particular autobiography. Mm. The first one is, uh, of course, it is a summary, as I said, of my life achievements to date. Mm. Uh, the second is uh, it explains my role in significant activities mm. uh, in three, I would say, three main uh, organizations. Uh, the first one, of course, is the Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, where I served as a commissioner, legal services. And there were, of course, some controversies within uh, the Revenue Authority, particularly related to a certain Danza case, uh, which led, uh, I, I don't know whether I would call it uh, uh termination of our appointments after uh, renewal uh, where i think the appointment had been renewed and then a month later uh it was terminated i was handling the danza case okay. uh, this was a case about uh, recovering taxes i think mm. danza, danza was being used as a, a conduit for uh tax evasion, especially uh, of, of, of uh, customs duties, import duties. Mm. Uh, so the, my, the, my book, you know, tries to uh, explain the context in which these things happened. Uh, this was in 1997. Uh, the second uh, significant organization where I have featured is, of course, Makerere University. Uh, where I have served as a, a dean of the Faculty of Law, mm. uh, director of the School of Graduate Studies, and later on I, I served as deputy vice chancellor in charge of uh, finance and administration. Mm. Uh, again, there were some uh, controversies <laughs> while I was there. Uh, one of them, of course, uh, related to uh, the collapse of the perimeter wall which was under construction. And uh, for some reason, you know, this uh, responsibility was being pushed to me. And yet uh, the decision to construct the wall was made by the university management. Okay. Collectively, yeah. And we, we, I had to explain to people that uh, legally, uh, if you have a committee taking a decision, you don't hold uh, one individual member of the committee uh, responsible. Uh, it is the committee which is responsible. And in any case, there they were investigations and uh, reports showed that uh, the problem was, uh, uh, I think, at the construction level. Okay. Uh, there were, I think, some mishandling of the construction of the wall. Um, of course, another matter, yes. I don't know whether I should continue. Yeah, another matter. Yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah. no. I um uh, just on that. Do you you mean there is no principle of separation of powers here? Uh, well, as I said, this decision was made by university management. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> if one was to talk of separation of powers, perhaps it would be a separation between the uh, the university council and uh, either Senate or the uh, various academic units. Mm. Uh, but here I was serving as a member of the university management. Okay. 
and uh, the, the the university had decided that due to uh, insecurity uh, a perimeter wall should be constructed gradually that means and, and uh, the, the, the funds were supposed to be uh, from the budget for the estates department mm. and and so the, the process started okay. and when things went wrong you know i think uh, the controversy was about trying to hold one individual responsible <laughs> for for what had gone wrong mm. no, i am okay Thank you uh, very much, Prof, for um, that brief summary. Maybe it's going to come out clear in um, some areas that we are really interested, um, you know, about your life. Um, I think just briefly when I shared your profile, I have seen very many young people excited. I've seen people in the judiciary excited. I've seen lecturers at different universities very excited. Um, and I think uh, you inspire so many young people. Um, but in your life, there are certain things that we want to appreciate in terms of, um, you know, some key points. For example, uh, we are aware that um, you, 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 you went to King's College, Budo. Yeah? Uh, yes. What, what is that key thing? What are those key values you would say that you got out from Budo? And actually, maybe before you respond on that, I want to apologize to... Uh, the parents of King's College Budo, uh, the platform where I am. I am a parent there. I have my son, so I shared your profile there. And the first thing they said, oh, uh, you guys are starting late. So I want to apologize. It was a technical problem, not Professor Vachibinga's problem. So let me get him off from the hook because it, it was not um, his creation. Uh, but um, what would you say King's College Budo uh, contributed to what you are, just briefly. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Tavingwa. Uh, I joined the King's College Buddha in 1967 from Lake Victoria School in Tebe. Uh, and uh, I was there for five years. I was in what they used to call uh, express streams. Those were streams where instead of doing uh, all level exams in uh, four years. Uh, we we did these exams within three years, and uh, uh, the, the, how they did that was that as soon as we joined the senior one, uh, they conducted a test and picked out certain students who uh, uh, <laughs> did the exams within three years. Mm. Uh, I found uh, King's College Bordeaux. Um, approach to uh, education to be holistic. That means it covered uh, a number of uh, areas. Apart from simply reading books, we were involved in uh, sports, we were involved in uh, uh, societies, either debating societies. Uh, I was also a, a scout. And uh, substantively, I... I, I, I um, I, I, I held, uh, <laughs> I would call them uh, about three positions, three interesting oh. positions. Okay. Uh, in, in, yeah, I, I was a timekeeper, chapel warden, uh, of course, house prefect, and president of the Senior Historical Society. Wow. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, Budo uh, teaches you to be a leader mm. and uh, to uh, think broadly. Uh, not simply confined uh, to, to reading books. Okay. Wow. That, yes. That, 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 that's a great one. Uh, I hope that after this, um, I'll share this with my son. He has just joined senior one in King's College, Budo. Uh, okay. Um, and, and, that's, mm -hmm. and also for the parents who are watching, actually the parents of senior one stream and South Africa, mm -hmm. in which I'm part of the group, uh, okay. I've shared this link. Uh, now, um, mm. away from King's College, Budo, you come to Makere as a student. What yes. were your key highlights as a student at Makere University? What do you remember? Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mr. Tavingwa. Uh, again, I joined uh, Makere University in 1972. Uh, this was uh, a year after Idi Amin had taken power. 
I was, uh, of course, I, I studied uh, law. Uh, at that time, uh, the law classes were not as big as they are now, because these days you may find the, the class has 200. We were only 40. Oh. And I... Okay. <laughs> Uh, and in my class were some uh, uh, outstanding people who later became outstanding personalities, like the former Prime Minister, Amama Mbabazi, okay. uh, then uh, Justice Nahamia, and, uh, and, and two Supreme Court justices, that is Justices Nshimye and uh, Mugamba. So we were in that uh, class. Okay. Uh, this, the significant activities uh, during that period was that I was a member of the Guild Representative Council, mm. uh, representing Lumumba Hall. I then, uh, I was also a co-editor of a magazine called The Franciscan uh, at, in, at St. Francis Chapel. And then a co-editor of the Makerere Law Journal, which was published in 1974. I co-edited with the Professor Morumba. Morumba is, uh, now lives in the U.S. Mm. And then uh, <laughs> uh, to show that uh, we, we were not confined to just studying, I, I represented the university in swimming in the uh, East African uh, University Games in Dallas Slam in 1970. Mm. Uh, so ba basically those are the... Uh, wow. Let's say the outstanding features of my stay at uh, Makerere. Uh, there was, of course, I should mention that there was controversy uh, when uh, there was an attempt to arrest the guild president. Th that's Olaro. what I wanted to ask, that were you not involved <laughs> in the strikes? That's why <laughs> it's very important to know where the shift has come from. And it's okay. important to know from you, yes. Well, I, at that time, I wouldn't say it was a strike as such, but uh, the uh, guild president, supported, of course, by the guild representative council, tried to ensure that the uh, what they used to call boom or the allowance, the student's allowance, was not abolished. There was an attempt to uh, abolish uh, that allowance. Okay. And, and they repeated... Uh, this opposition when the Minister of Education came to Makere, the minister was called uh, Barnabas Kili, and uh, based on his speech, there was an attempt to arrest him, to arrest the guild uh, president. But the university secretary intervened and said uh, they will deal with the matter internally within the university. Okay. And that was a difficult period because people used to disappear and I uh, think they were murdered. Uh, so that, that night, that night, uh, Ola Rotuno uh, arranged and left the country, uh, at okay. least to save his life, yes. Mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, for, so uh, just briefly, uh, for the students, let, let, now I'm going back to the students of Makere. What do you think uh, would be the difference between the students then? and the students you see today? Or what do you think you would advise uh, the young people maybe at Makere today uh, that they could be able to borrow from your previous, uh, you know, your, from your previous uh, group? Yes, thank you very much. Of course, uh, based on the background I mentioned of Budo, uh, I think when one is a student, again, you should not simply focus on uh, reading. Uh, you should be involved in uh, activities, you know, such as sports. And uh, I think you talked about uh, moods. Uh, of course, we had people who were bookworms. <laughs> I don't want to mention some. <laughs> no, of yeah. name. I think it would be a very interesting part, Prof, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to know who the bookworms for people to learn. I don't think that is a bad habit. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. this 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 gentleman later, be, of course, he later became a distinguished person. He became an attorney general. Oh. He was our contemporary. Mr. Kidu Makubuya, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's also a very distinguished. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He became distinguished, but in his case, he was focusing on books from uh, 
the hall of residence to the library then to of course to the class but okay. my, my view is that again one should have uh, a broad outlook mm. uh, one should mix with other people and then you should take even your studies seriously what i've discovered about uh, the students at least as a lecturer is that some of the students don't even bother to attend the uh, lectures uh, especially for instance over the last uh, two years when we were conducting lectures through zoom online mm. some people are not coming for lectures and then uh, uh, <laughs> when it comes to giving them assignments either they would perform poorly or they would forget that they have to undertake these uh, assignments mm. so you should take your uh, studies seriously but uh, at the same time you should uh, not forget about the society around you wow mm. thank you i think let's move away from makere university briefly at ldc uh you are aware that uh, i don't know whether the failure rate by then uh i mean as of now was as as bad as as today i don't know what you would briefly say about the legal education at uh, at ldc what was it like by then? And in your opinion, what do you think? I know that you might not authoritatively talk about LDC because you are not there now, but because you are in this line, I'm sure that people who are watching would like to get your experience when you are at LDC. What was being done right at that time? Was the failure rate so high as it is today? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Uh, Tavingwa. Okay. Uh, first of all, I think uh, one should note that our classes were smaller. As I said, those of us moving from Makerere to LDC, we were only 40. Uh, these days, you may find that they are about, they may get into hundreds and hundreds of students moving to our uh, LDC. And that is partly why they initially had uh, introduced a pre-entry exam to go to LDC. Uh, the second factor to be noted is that, of course, Makerere was the only uh, university, you know, producing students going to LDC. Now, I believe there are maybe about uh, uh, maybe six to seven universities you know, producing law graduates. Uh, I, 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 I personally, I think the pre-entry exam should have been maintained. Uh, because it helps to uh, sieve out uh, people who are uh, <laughs> who, who, who would handle, let's say, the eldest course. Uh, I, I don't want to criticize other universities, but I think there is a, a lot lacking in some of the uh, products of some of those uh, universities, and I think that contributes to the failure rate. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course. Uh, Although, as lawyers, we are not uh, medical people, uh, we are keen on ensuring that uh, people who are enrolled as advocates are competent to work as uh, advocates. We don't want uh, uh, to, to, to sort of uh, let out people uh, say that they are qualified as advocates when they can't do the work. Uh, so that, that uh, uh, is another factor, I think, which LDC takes into account to ensure okay. that uh, you pass properly <laughs> and you are, <laughs> you are competent. Okay. Uh, of course, at the time when I was there, I, again, I happened to be a farm leader. We used to have about four farms, uh, sort of organized like uh, uh, legal farms. So I was a farm leader, and at that time, interestingly, the director was a retired uh, Chief Justice uh, Benjamin Odoki. Uh, thank you. Mm. Okay. No, that, that, that's great. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think as you are talking about uh, the Kalba from other universities, uh, yesterday I personally attended the moot court competition, and uh, I saw... I saw I saw Cavendish University doing a very... In fact, I, I would interest you to go and look at those um, presentations. And I think I was, I was excited that, hey, maybe private education, uh, mm. people should not underestimate its impact. <clears throat> because we mm. had this best orator, the way he was 
you know, during the rebuttals and all that, they were doing an amazing job. Maybe, okay. you know, we shall try to um, look into some, some of the factors you are raising, uh, but also maybe try to see how some of these institutions need to be, to be supported. But the work okay. was wonderful, yeah? Um, yes. So thank you, Prof, for those comments. Now, um, we go into your earlier career. I see in your, you, I see you in Nigeria, uh, in, I think, is it Kano State? Uh, I see <laughs> most of these so universities much, yes. during your, uh, your youth age. And it looks yes. like, you know, your impact has been spread over Africa. Would love to know yeah. from Nigeria, what are some of those key highlights uh, you will tell us about uh, your life in Nigeria? Okay. And was it only academic? Did it, uh, was it majorly <laughs> academic? Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tabiwa. Um, I should first of all explain that uh, I, uh, I obtained my uh, doctoral degree in 1981, and I had intended to come back to Uganda. But then my parents uh, discouraged me. They said the security situation here was not uh, very good. Uh, so I applied uh, uh, to some universities in uh, Nigeria, and I was uh, uh, appointed a lecturer in initially at the University of Sokoto. They now call it Uthman Danfordio University. That is in the uh, northwestern part of uh, the country, and that is where the Sultan of Sokoto, uh, you know, resides. Uh, now, the, the, this uh, university was relatively new, uh, so we, we had to do a lot of work. Uh, there were not many lecturers and so on and so forth. Uh, but apart from uh, teaching, uh, again, we were interacting with members of uh, the community, we were not restricted to just uh, teaching and uh, reading. But one thing I learned uh, about the Nigerians was uh, a culture of writing books, especially uh, taking our discipline, especially in uh, various uh, um, lesser disciplines within law. Uh, that, <laughs> okay, well, I, from uh, my recollection of Uganda, not many Ugandans had written books at that time. So I was uh, sort of motivated. Uh, I think by the time I left uh, Nigeria, I had uh, uh, written two books for them, uh, one on partnership and the other one on uh, trusts. Uh, and then uh, the, 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 the other thing was that uh, uh, they always held uh, um, annual annual conferences for law teachers so that, so that they go and exchange ideas. I believe at that time there were about 30 universities um, and most of them were, 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 uh, were what we would call government universities as opposed to uh, private universities. Mm. Now from Sokoto, I also worked at the University of uh, Jos. Jos is in the middle of the Nigeria. Then uh, there was uh, also, um, uh, well, I, I, from, from Jos, I moved to Imo State University. Now, the reason why I was moving was that uh, they used to give us short contracts of two years. Mm. Uh, so after the two years, uh, if there was an opportunity to move to another university at a higher level, for instance, from lecturer, grade two lecturer grade one and then senior lecturer of course then i would move so that is how i moved to Porto just uh Imo state then university of Ilorin, and the final ogun state university where i had risen to the position of uh, that uh, reader reader here is equivalent to a, a associate professor mm. and of course uh, dean yeah so that, that, uh, that so that was the, the sort of experience i gathered from uh, Nigeria, people writing books, and I tried to inculcate that culture when I came back to Makerere University. Mm. I, I normally joke uh, with students that uh, although these days I teach uh, revenue law and taxation and of course intellectual property, 
uh, they may not meet me physically, but they meet me through my books. Uh, and, the and, and, and just sorry to interrupt you, I have one of your students here. I don't know if yes, you remember yes. him, Mulali Rafaizu, okay. Umar. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I, I know him. I, I, I supervised him. I supervised he is him live on air and he's saying interesting <laughs> conversation, Prof. I think he's currently <laughs> heading uh, LDC in the north, I think in Lira. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, yeah, maybe I, I, I think could just read. Then we have, okay, this one is from Dar es Salaam. George Lamau, he says, thank you for, na, thank you for the show, uh, live from Dar es Salaam. Then we have uh, Madame Florence Mutiable, the senior presidential advisor in charge of Busoga uh, poverty alleviation. Uh, okay. She's only worried that the show is going to be short. No, the show will not be short. We shall still cover the one hour. And the beauty with this is that the conversation we are going to have here is permanently available on the platform of Tanya Innovations. Um, and also as Tanya Innovations, we always allow free access. So we are going to have millions of people uh, accessing this. So you should not get worried, uh, Madam Butiawe. Then Africa Kirenga says, thank you, Senior Maganda, for such uh, great work. Uh, Nuwagira Hillary, thank you. Ola Johnny says, thank you. Kazungu Mohammed. Uh, I'm elevated. I think that's what he meant to say. Then Rita Nagudi uh, says, hello. Yeah, just among some of the few comments, Prof. Okay. Uh, so, Prof, we... Do, so, do you still have any other information you want to give us about Nigeria before we come back now to Makere? Uh, okay. Well, well, I think one... Uh, an uh, interesting thing we encountered at, at, at Ogun State University was when we were invited, you know, to a function uh, where I think uh, they, they were congratulating Wale Shoyinka on his uh, achievements. Okay. And uh, <laughs> the function was conducted in Yoruba. I didn't know Yoruba, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I sat there with, with my wife and children trying to understand <laughs> mm. what, what this was. Uh, so, uh, okay, what I want to bring out about that is that uh, the Nigerians are very proud of their languages. Uh, of course, culture. when we were in yeah, yeah, their culture and languages, when we were in Sokoto, uh, it was Hausa, the language was Hausa Fulani. Uh, in the Imo state, that is the uh, Igbo area, they spoke Igbo. And then, of course, when we moved to University of Ilorin and uh, Ogun state, uh, that was Yoruba. So they, they are extremely uh, proud uh, of their culture. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Okay. That, 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 that's an important observation. Maybe it explains why they are so far doing so well in certain aspects of of life, I think there is a lot of uh, transformation that is actually taking place in Nigeria. And uh, okay. from your submission, uh, maybe it's a worthwhile thing to note uh, for maybe the young people who are coming up, uh, who are always influenced by the Western culture, and they forget about um, our traditional values. So uh, yeah. now back to Makere University, you are the dean uh, in the Faculty of Law. So what happens here, uh, besides the, the publications uh, that you made, uh, what would you say you are proud of uh, in terms of your role as a dean in the Faculty of Loma Kerry University? Okay, thank you, Mr. Tavingwa. The, well, I should first of all uh, uh, explain that uh, I went back to Makerere from uh, the URA in 1998 and uh, did not become a dean uh, until 2002. I succeeded Professor Oloko Nyango okay. and uh, even when I served as dean, uh, it was for a very short time. Uh, again, the, 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 there is some institutional politics going on. I thought I was going to serve as a dean for some time. 
Right. But then there were other pressures, and I ended up as director. I, after one year as the dean, I, I ended up as director, uh, School of Graduate Studies. Mm. That means handling uh, uh, postgraduate matters. Uh, I, I mean, I touch on some of these aspects in, uh, in my book. Uh, some of the frictions between uh, central administration and people who are serving, you know, in the units. Mm. Uh, and then again, uh, I thought again I was going to serve for four years as director school, uh, in the School of Graduate Studies. But then they advertised the positions of uh, ch vice chancellor and deputy vice chancellor. And uh, I applied. Uh, this was nine, 2004, and uh, uh, I, 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 together with, uh, I think she's now Justice of the Supreme Court, uh, Professor Tibate Mwechiri Kubinza, we were appointed uh, Deputy Vice Chancellors. She was Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic Affairs, and I was Deputy Vice Chancellor Finance and Administration. We, we were the first deputy vice chancellors to be appointed uh, through what they call a search process. The search process uh, involves not only interviews, but uh, you, you have to make presentations before audiences. And then after that, uh, your three names, I think, are sent to uh, Senate, and then Senate re re recommends to council. So. That, that, that was, a, a, I would call, a, a newer approach to choosing leadership because previously uh, both the vice chancellor and uh, the deputies were appointed by the chancellor who was the head of state. Okay. Uh, so there was a measure, there, were, there was a measure of, uh, I would call it a, uh, <laughs> democracy. Uh, however, in the last two years of our uh, tenure as deputy vice chancellor i think there was some interference coming in from outside uh we were supposed to be reappointed as uh, deputy vice chancellors but then the minister of state for higher education suspended uh, the operation of the universities and other tertiary institutions act and prevented that process uh, taking place uh it caused a bit of confusion uh, we were told we were told that we can apply to be appointed in acting capacity. Personally, I, I declined. I said if I've been serving as a, a substantive deputy vice chancellor, I don't see myself serving as an acting. Uh, my colleagues, of course, uh, some of them applied. Uh, the majority of them were, of course, not appointed. We ended up with the uh, leadership in acting capacity for three years. Uh, but uh, the, the thing I should mention here is that uh, during the time we were deputy vice chancellors, a number of policies were passed. Uh, I think uh, maybe there are about six uh, significant ones. Uh, okay. The one on HIV, AIDS, mm. then the, the one on intellectual property management policy, mm. uh, then research and innovation policy, the human resource manual, mm. the investment policy, and of course, uh, the process of uh, uh, promoting uh, uh, academic lecturers mm. uh, through what they call a fast track. If you, 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 you are writing a lot, uh, you, you, you could be fast tracked in terms of uh, promotion. Promotions. Uh, yeah. So, so and, I regard those... And that's Policies why as, I'm seeing as, somebody yeah. called Murangira Aban saying, Professor, yes. your journey is full of leadership, right from secondary <laughs> school, and indeed profession, yes. uh, promotion <laughs> comes from responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I know, yes, I know Murangira. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, so, um, well, I think what we are learning from you, uh, it appears that you are grooming does not even start at the university. Uh, King's College Budo had some substantial influence on your character, your life. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it gives you that necessary discipline to uh, to wade into uh, you know into success. 
Uh, we also uh, see you repeating the same um, at the university through LDC. We are still singing leadership uh, again until you come at uh, Makerere University. So, uh, yeah. can you briefly tell us about your publications? I have seen so many books uh, that you have yeah. written, yeah. and I wonder how you have been able to do this. There are so many lecturers today uh, okay. that don't have they say, you know, it is so hard to do all these writings. How did you do it? What could you be able to tell um, the academicians who are today uh, in African universities or Ugandan universities for that matter? Thank you, uh, Mr. Tabingwa. Um, well, first of all, I should mention that uh, writing was motivated by uh, my experience in Nigeria, as I mentioned. Uh, people were encouraged to write. Uh, by the time I returned to Makerere, I had uh, 17 publications, but uh, my uh, <laughs> my colleagues there had none. And I, I, I tried, <laughs> no, I tried uh, to... <laughs> Prof, sorry for interruption, but now it appears you had borrowed some skills from uh, Professor Ma Makubuya, because you said he was a bookworm, and it appears that... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. You are you are also you seem to have been a bookworm. How will you have seventeen and your colleagues have nothing? Uh, well, well, okay, that was in Nigeria. Okay. 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 Well, I wouldn't I, I would I wouldn't call it a big bookworm as such. In fact, when I came back to my Canada, I tried to advise my colleagues on how to go about the writing that uh, from your lecture notes, you know, you can develop uh, books. You know, you, you, you keep on lecturing, but then you update uh, the materials you are using. You, in, in our profession, you know, you have to keep uh, reading new, new laws passed the by parliament. Laws. Yeah, yeah, then the cases, you know. So as you are updating, uh, you, you find time. And I always tell people, that you don't have to put aside one week or one month to write. E each day, maybe two hours, you write something. Mm. <laughs> and that is how you develop uh, a book. Uh, so that, that, that is how I, I came to, to write. Uh, I, I mentioned in my book that uh, uh, the books I, I wrote here were partly uh, motivated by those I wrote in uh, Nigeria. For instance, Partnership, which was published in 1993 here. Uh, I had had one on Partnership in Nigeria in 1989. And then the Trusts. Uh, trusts, again, I had written a book on Trusts in Nigeria. And then followed it up with, uh, uh, again, Trusts. Uh, then Company Law. I, I had also written a book uh, on Company Law in uh, Nigeria. And then, again, developed it uh, uh, to, to, to suit what is going on here. Uh, then they were uh, disciplines where there were no books at all. Eh? Well, actually, all those books which I wrote in the 90s, <laughs> we, we, we didn't have uh, local books apart from, let's say, the Law of Business Organizations by Katende and others, uh, which was uh, a collection of materials. Uh, but uh, my mine, of course, is a textbook. And uh, the last edition, I think, came out as company law in uh, East Africa about uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the idea is that you collect material and then you keep writing. And uh, that, that is the advice actually I gave to my colleagues. Uh, some of my colleagues actually heeded that advice. Uh, I think I can mention uh, uh, some of them, uh, people like Professor Mukuba. Uh, mm -hmm. Professor Tiwatema, uh, who also sa re re wrote some books, uh, Oloka Onyango, and uh, uh, even uh, Juko, Juko uh, Fred Juko. Yeah, they, they followed. And of course, when I, the, the year I came back, we even uh, revived the, uh, the East, uh, Uganda Law Society Review uh, to encourage uh, people to write articles so that they are published. In, in the Uganda Law Society Review, uh, where, by the way, I also served as a secretary. As I served as secretary of Uganda Law Society. Mm. And I remember one uh, memorial 
trip we made to Rakitura. Was it 1994? Uh, we, we had gone there as a law society to plead uh, for improvement in the remuneration of judges. Um, <laughs> let, let me uh, stop there, I think, for the time being. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll read the comments by, um, yes, uh, Madam Florence Mutia, I think, is saying she's stuck on the show. And she's saying, mm -hmm. Professor Bachivinga is a gentleman with a wealth of experience and is an idol to the young generation. Uh, thank you, Evans, for bringing him to the show for the young to emulate. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Florence. And I usually, by the way, appreciate Honorable Florence because despite her age, she is mm -hmm. that presidential advisor who is always uh, using technology. She's everywhere. Uh, so yes. we really want to appreciate her uh, yes. for being uh, dynamic. Yeah. Um, yes, now, Prof, I know. I know. Um, I know Florence, yes. So we, we, we get, what would you, in, in relation to your experiences in writing, how would you advise the young people who are now involved with copy and paste from the internet in terms of plagiarism, in, of, in terms of not having original um, <laughs> work? What would you advise, especially with the current age? Because I know that you're still in writing and you can be able yes. to uh, connect these two uh, your pre previous scholarship skills as a yes. writer, but there is a lot so of plagiarism it, today because of internet. What would you? What would be your advice? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, I would actually advise people not uh, to copy or plagiarize. Mm. Uh, what I try to uh, advise my students mm. is that they should take the trouble uh, to read. Uh, existing uh, works and then uh, you know formulate their ideas um, in fact for now some years I've uh, even teaching I've developed a system whereby I divide students into groups uh, they are given uh, topics you know to research on and then they come to class and they make presentations make presentations discussions take place and then they are told to write a refined paper based on what they originally wrote and then uh, what what other people have contributed in class okay. uh, and that counts towards uh, coursework mm. so the the idea is to imbibe in them the, this uh, uh, notion or the, the the discipline of internalizing uh, information on your own after reading, and then you try to present it. Mm. Uh, on pl plagiarism, of course, I, I have to uh, tell students that now we have uh, what, what are called uh, technical uh, gadgets which can Correct. detect plagiarism. Mm. And in fact, for instance, when you write your dissertation and you submit it, before you are subjected to an examination, uh, it undergoes a plagiarism test, a technical plagiarism test. So you would be wasting your time uh, just copying and uh, presenting material to, to, to people. If I, uh, I remember, I think this was some years ago, one of our students who was doing a master's degree who presented a plagiarist, uh, plagiarized uh, <laughs> dissertation. Mm. He, he, was, he was simply uh, shown the door. He was thrown out. <laughs> I think uh, I, 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 he didn't go to court. He was a lawyer. Of course, we, we teach okay. lawyers. But mm. He didn't go to court. So I, I don't advise the students to plagiarize. At least check the trouble to read and then write. <laughs> I mean, your lecturers can always guide you on how to go about to writing okay. certain things. Yes. Okay. Now, um, maybe one view. Okay. Before that, I want to acknowledge comments from uh, uh, Council Anguria Joseph. Uh, Anguria Joseph is, uh, I think, uh, a lead partner or senior partner in Anguria and Company Advocates. Uh, okay. He says, Mr. Maganda, thank you for hosting Professor in this show. We cherish his wealth of knowledge so much. His Lego works inspired some of us to what we are today. Okay, Rob, you, can see, you can see that uh, people are basically excited 
And uh, <laughs> yes, yes. yeah, so but uh, we, we, we think you may be, um, this is encouraging for people to work hard. At that time, mm. you didn't know what this was going to do today. Uh, but okay. you can see that, um, you know, uh, you are getting these comments uh, when okay. you're still here, rather than people coming <laughs> and then they drive cars, then people, you know. Yeah. So, yes. but uh, we thank all those who are online for those comments. Uh, we still have uh, Faizo Mlalira online, Murangira Aban is still online, mm. uh, okay. Honorable Florence Mutiable, she's still mm. online, Anguria Joseph is online, uh, Mulenga, yes. Africa Kaleng Kirenga says he's also mm. in Dar es Salaam, still also mm. watching. We thank you for uh, okay. those comments. Um, mm. So now, Prof, we let's go back to uh, I think your current. I don't know if there is anything. No, no, no. Before we go there, mm. we know that um, now, for example, today's cases, Ugandan cases, are on Uli. It's an electronic yes. version. But I've yes. also still seen many lecturers who still insist that students should go to the library to read the original uh, law reports from the books. Mm. I don't know what your take what your take is because I just go to Uli and I'm able to get all the cases. I don't understand why the lecturers insist. Please go to the original um, reports in the library uh, for you to understand. Uh, you know, to be good at reading cases. What is your opinion on this? Yeah, yeah, yes. I feel I'm flexible about this. Um, if uh, legal information is available online, uh, maybe through Uli, which I I have discovered, they try to update uh, very frequently. I, I think one can make use of uh, that information. Uh, perhaps uh, those who may want to insist on reading the hard copy may, may be concerned more about uh, uh, how would we call it citation. You know saying this was uh, uh, said on this page. <laughs> Maybe they, they, right. they are more concerned about that. Uh, uh, so, so that, you know, it is uh, very clear that, okay, you've read uh, the information and you've identified the, the pages on which uh, uh, this information appears. Otherwise, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely flexible. I use, uh, I, I use online facilities uh so those are, those i started with uh, sometimes wonder <laughs> they, they, they may ask information for instance about kamuli and there's a lot of argument about kamuli uh, and then i i i, I produce uh, <laughs> an online link okay. uh, and they wonder how you have done okay 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 <laughs> yes. uh, okay so, um, Prof, we, we have some few minutes before we, we end to this show, but there are still things that I want to uh, get from you, especially, I think, your current roles. Uh, mm -hmm. You are currently the Secretary General of, uh, what do we call it, Uganda Science. National Academy, Academy yeah, of Uganda Science. Uganda National Academy. First of all, yes, what is yes. uh, this Uganda National Academy of Sciences? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tabingo. I think uh, the Uganda National Academy of Sciences is a, uh, a body which brings together um, academicians and uh, scholars from all disciplines. Uh, at this stage, I may say something which is not uh, palatable to some people. Okay. Uh, you know, currently they've been emphasizing, you know, paying science teachers and paying them more than uh, <laughs> the other people in other disciplines. Mm. Of course, at Makerere, uh, again, science lecturers are paid more. Uh, but in the Uganda National Academy of Sciences and the other academies where I'm a, a fellow, uh, African Academy of Science and the World Academy of Sciences. Our concept of science is that uh, it is holistic. It covers all discipline. In fact, we, we take uh, science to be a method. Uh, so if someone uh, is skilled in uh, literature, uh, we don't uh, disqualify that discipline from being science because there is a contribution being made uh, uh, to society. 
So the Uganda National Academy of Sciences was uh, actually set up in uh, about 2000. And uh, uh, it is involved mainly in uh, producing what are called consensus studies on issues affecting society. Uh, we can mention uh, a few uh, on which consensus study reports have been uh, produced uh, in the last five years. Uh, for instance, there is a, a consensus study on owning our future, which focuses on uh, uh, the, the link between urban and uh, uh, rural areas. Then there is another one on, again, owning our future, but focusing on KCCA. Uh, there is one focusing on uh, education, uh, another on shift, uh, what is called the mindset shift, uh, a case for domestic financing, uh, where one is trying to encourage governments, you know, to uh, uh, build structures for uh, 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 revenue mobilization, which they, they would use instead of depending on outside sources. And uh, the most recent was what is called the trust governance and partnerships uh, as a key to sustainable uh, development. That means you need to build the trust among the population uh, so that they can work with you. Uh, this idea of somebody dictating, you know, from the top uh, <laughs> is, is not really good. Uh, we've encountered this recently uh, in, a, in a research project on uh, uh, revenue bargaining, the, the, f the fact that you, if you want to generate more revenue, you, you have to show those who are paying the taxes that you are doing something for them, and you should listen to them, yes. So that, that is uh, basically what uh, Uganda National Academy of Sciences has been doing. I've been uh, Secretary General for six years. My term will end in uh, uh, October. Oh, okay. thank you. Wow, that's great. Uh, but just before we leave that part, and uh, maybe as we as we summarize, you have talked something in particular about um, mindset. Do you yes. have you um, are you are, are you part of the system that is uh, talking about the mindset change in the in the parish development model? <laughs> uh, no, no, the reason why I'm asking it's because I've had yeah. the government talking so many times about mindset change, mindset change. And I think my problem has been that do we have a minimum booklet or minimum information that we can know that if people have been sensitized about, then we can know that this person, the mindset we are talking about is here. Because it appears that people assume that so long as you talk to people, uh, then the mindset change occurs. But I know that this is a process. Yeah? You would agree yes. that uh, for you to be where you are, we are now appreciating that it's something that has taken values from behind. But when we talk about mindset change and leaders just go and talk to people, you know, it appears as if uh, mindset change is an event. Mm. You understand what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, the uh, if I may call it mindset uh, change uh, can be gradual, and it should uh, involve uh, engaging, you know, with the people who are affected. Uh, I personally, I'm sorry to say <laughs> that there are some things people don't expect me to say, but personally, I have not uh, yet internalized this uh, parish model, mm. and I'm not very sure whether it is different from uh, past initiatives, you know, mm. operation, wealth mm. creation, uh, you know, poverty alleviation, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and it seems they the... the there is no structure. I, I, at least I've not uh, seen a, <laughs> a structure, you know, defining this uh, parish mode. I, th I think recently, I, perhaps I need to read those small pamphlets which came out right. recently. Mm. I, 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 need, I need to read them, you know, to, to understand the parish model. But uh, the point I think you are making, which is critical, 
is that there should be engagement between government and uh, the people. Mm. Uh, explain to them exactly what you are doing. There are other factors relating to the parish model which I have, uh, I think, identified some issues, like uh, the amount of uh, financial facilitation being given out re relative, you know, to the constituencies. <laughs> you may find that you are going to give out 100 million, uh, you know, to a particular county, but, you know, the, that county has more people than uh, That's right. another county, you know, so there the, are the issues of uh, equity uh, and really how the this support, you know, is going to reach as many people as possible. Mm. Uh, but uh, that, that falls, I would encourage people to read this uh, consensus study, Mindset Shift, case for domestic financing. Uh, these documents are available on the UNAS website. They are free. Uh, even when you want a hard copy, you know, you, you can contact the offices of UNAS on McKinley University campus. So uh, you can consult these. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm. Some comments from Lovington UG. I am a student and I'm really learning a lot from this program. Thank you so much. Uh, still, Mladi Rafaizo, I think he was talking about uh, the reports. He says, many times we are looking for some old principles and we are inter interrogating their historical foundation. So we retrieve this in-depth analysis in old law reports like defunct East Africa Court of Appeal. Or oh, I think he was uh, still supporting the mm. essence of going into uh, yeah, books yes, rather yes. than being online. Thank you very much, uh, Council mm. uh, Faiso. I think that mm. puts some meaning, and I hope that uh, when students come and read this, they will be able to appreciate, because sometimes they think the lecturers are too hard on them, uh, <laughs> and yet everything is readily available online. So I think that's, oh. uh, that's an important input. Uh, now, mm. Prof, about uh, being a member of the Presidential Awards Committee, Yes. What does it involve to be a member of the Presidential Awards Committee? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, a number of people keep asking uh, that question. Uh, I think I should start at the beginning that the Presidential Awards Committee is, of course, uh, constituted under the National Honors and Awards Act of uh, 2001 and it consists of uh, a chairperson uh, Madame uh, Beatrice Wabudea and uh, eight other members uh, and it, uh, uh, yes I'm, I'm one of those since uh, 2019 uh, these members must be of high moral character and proven integrity uh, we, we normally serve for five years at a time, of course, subject to uh, reappointment. There are regulations which guide the award of honors. These are issued by the president. There is actually a statutory instrument containing uh, those regulations. And uh, the, this committee operates uh, with uh, a chancery, uh, what, what one may call a secretariat. The chancellor is based in the president's office uh, and is a custodian and administrator of the uh, these uh, national honors. Uh, of course, uh, it gives out uh, decorations and medals. Uh, there are several medals actually <laughs> which are given out. There are about uh, nine of them. Uh, you heard of the most excellent order, excellent order of the Pearl of uh, Africa. Uh, distinguished Order of the Nile, Distinguished Order of the Crested Crane, the National Independence Medal. These days they call it Golden Jubilee Award. Uh, now that we are going to turn 60, I don't know whether they will now call it Diamond, <laughs> Diamond uh, Golden, sorry, Diamond Award. Okay. Uh, then you have the Naluva Ali Modo, a medal. Uh, then there are military uh, decorations like uh, orders of Katanga, Kabalega, Renzori, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, all these, they define. Are, the, are, are, are all of, these still under your 
are all these under your committee? Yeah, the yes, yes, they are under. Ah, oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, yes, they are actually listed in the schedule to the Act, the National Owners and Awards uh, Act. Uh, so uh, the, the the committee, of course, the, the challenges which we normally encounter uh, when people are asked to nominate people, they seem to nominate. Well, others nominate, I think, <laughs> people they know. Uh, others don't seem to appreciate uh, uh, what a national award is. They, they may describe uh, somebody's routine work, and they think that that... Uh, <laughs> no, because that's what I wanted to ask. Because uh, yes. as we are here, we are speaking to you live. Uh, I'm <laughs> happy that you have been able to mention uh, the different types of medals that we have. Uh, but yes. one question somebody asks that how do how does your committee arrive at these persons because some of us will say we know so many other people who have done wonderful uh, work what criteria mm. uh, does the committee use to, to, to be able to see these people yes thank you very much of course uh, as I said there are regulations which uh, guide us but uh, to simplify it, I think somebody must have done something exceptional uh, in whatever they are doing, or either in their discipline or in their employment, uh, which would merit the national award. Uh, the recent committee we had, uh, I think that must have been before the Labor Day. Well, sorry, these awards are normally given out on certain public holidays, you know, the NRM in January, Women's Day, then uh, Labor Day, uh, Independence Day, and so on and so forth. But uh, when we met, uh, a number of people actually were recommended for awards based on what they had done during the COVID period. Mm. <laughs> but uh, sorry, unfortunately, we, 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 we did not agree uh, <laughs> because we... <laughs> <laughs> we regarded such activities as a routine. As a routine, okay. No, but yes. uh, to the contrary, maybe you might find some of us agree because COVID was, um, you know, like uh, this platform I'm running started during mm -hmm. COVID. You know why? Because okay. I sat down and said, I have a bachelor's of IT, I have a master's of software engineering. And then I was mm. seeing all universities shut up. We don't even have an e-learning mm. platform. We were not communicating. Okay. Um, okay. You know, we were humiliated. I remember the president uh, in Munyonyo saying, oh, you people, you have betrayed us. But then as I was complaining uh, what the leadership of the country has done, I was there mm. asking myself as an IT person that what contribution mm. have I made mm. to my country and Africa. Okay. And it's the reason why okay. I started this platform. Now I make sure okay. I engage mm. young people. I'm trying to make sure that I archive people like you um, okay. in that at mm. any point there should be a platform that can um, ensure that your voice, even when you are not there, is mm -hmm. there for somebody to follow. Because we, yes. have, we are losing direction as a society in terms of mentorship, and yet, uh, sometimes young people think that, okay, if you want to be mentored, then you have to be abroad. And yet now, with somebody mm. uh, listening to the words that you're saying, and then being able to connect to your book, uh, I'm mm. sure that some character will be affected. So that's okay. why I'm saying that I think the COVID, uh, it, mm. it had its own uh, unique uh, features. Yes. And I think I'll still be able to agree with those who say that, okay, maybe they made a substantial contribution. But if they were mm. just sent, uh, you know, to carry out the normal duties, maybe, but I'm mm. sure there are people who pulled it. And uh, okay. maybe we have to appreciate because otherwise we would have had so many deaths uh, okay. than that is what, what is there today. So, yes, um, yes. okay, Prof, I think, I don't know if there are any other experiences that you want to talk about before you could make uh, your final remarks uh, because we are <coughs> we, having some few minutes to close. Okay, okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, I appreciate uh, being hosted on this uh, forum. Uh, I didn't uh, expect it. Mm. Uh, 
I would, uh, in summary, say that I think uh, uh, <laughs> my life, if uh, one can uh, review it based on the book, uh, reflects uh, an approach to life uh, which is supposed to be um, disciplined, uh, should be uh, compassionate, one should uh, care you know, for other people. Um, in our particular profession, uh, of course, we have to continuously update ourselves on new legislation, decided cases, and so on. And of course, the lecturer has the added impetus of delivering updated information uh, to students. Uh, so th these are important uh, considerations, I think, in uh, going about one's life. Uh, apart from caring for other people, you should also be professional. That means you keep reading. Uh, I, I, I came across some uh, people who had just graduated and they said uh, they finished reading. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> you can't I've do just that started. <laughs> with the law. Yes, <laughs> you have to keep uh, reading. Uh, then in terms of challenges, of course, you have uh, to appreciate the outlook uh, of people uh, from different uh, areas, uh, people from different backgrounds, uh, and the way they see and handle matters. So the, 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 there should be an element of accommodation. You, are, you understand uh, where they are coming from and probably guide them. Uh, maybe tell them that, well, if you continue this way, you, you may not uh, uh, achieve much. Uh, so the, well, the, the autobiography, which uh, we, we mentioned, it is a short, a short autobiography. And uh, I keep joking that... Uh, one of the motivations for writing it was that uh, uh, I thought that COVID would carry me away because we... <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> okay. We, we, we lost a lot of colleagues in Makerere, mm. uh, in the Uganda National Academy of Sciences. And then at one of the annual meetings, uh, uh, sorry, annual conferences of Uganda Law Society, somebody actually revealed that at that time, 30 advocates had died. Oh so uh, the, the, that was one of the motivations for writing the book. Uh, okay. How in, much in is summary, the book? Uh, the, the book uh, currently at the School of Law, I think it is uh, 40,000 40, shillings. Okay. Uh, but uh, when it gets to places like Aristo, uh, you may find that it is a little uh, more expensive. We hope to have online uh, uh, copies available from next uh, month. Uh, the online copy may be slightly different from uh, what, what we have now, uh, but uh, uh, it, it covers, of course, as I said, my early life. It talks about my uh, grandparents and parents, my experience abroad. Uh, then it talks about my work uh, in the URA in Makerere. Okay. And uh, the, you kept talking about so many books. Uh, the, the, there is a synopsis of those books. All right. I think uh, this is in chapter six. The, I, I think maybe about 13 of them. The, there is a summary on 13 of them. And then, uh, of course, the work we've just mentioned on uh, in uh, Uganda National Academy of Sciences. I didn't mention the my controversial yeah, I, I, I think that it was not me who was controversial, but when I was uh, Chancellor of Busoga Diocese, there were problems in Busoga uh, Diocese in the uh, mid-90s. Mm. And then the, la the last chapter simply deals with my, uh, what I would call my nuclear family. Mm. Uh, maybe at a later time we may update it, but uh, uh, if COVID comes... <laughs> <laughs> No, you are, you, are, you are not going anywhere, Prof. I think uh, <laughs> the systems are very smart. Eh? And uh, 
you know this is where we say science sometimes yes science is good but uh, it limits it, it makes us yes. not see any uh, uh, most of the things i have a professor okay. who used to say that uh, mm. the way you see is mm. the very way you don't see yeah okay. and i would say what is this man talking about but he says once mm. you put your focus in this direction you cut out research mm. in this direction you only mm. get knowledge in that direction then you okay. you forget about the complex system and okay. how it is affecting you without necessarily mm. your input yeah okay so mm. so, so sometimes okay. we find that in the world yes there are so many things that happen because we bring out an input but there are also things that happen because those things are happening whether you are putting input or not but mm. they are just they are affecting how maybe you know your things will come out so i'm sure okay. that uh, if you survived the first one you are much more smart <laughs> to survive the yes, second yes. one so prof okay, um okay. i will ask um what we are going to do as tanya innovations i think it's it, it's a high level i don't know where um mm. we we i want you to give me 50 copies mm. oh thank you your books thank you. Okay, uh, okay. We are not necessarily mm -hmm. going to buy them as Tanya, but uh, what okay. we are going to do, we are going to mm -hmm. take trouble to make sure that okay. we get people to buy uh, those copies. Uh, just as great. a contribution, because like I've told okay. you, uh, mm -hmm. Tanya, we believe in value, we believe that the world okay. is going in disarray, uh, okay. and people are ignoring uh, these very glaring, uh, scary mm -hmm. patterns that we are having. Uh, and I yeah. think uh, on behalf of Tanya Innovations, uh, what okay. I would love is that once I have those books, I'm going to take trouble. In fact, I'm going to start with those who are on this platform. Uh, <laughs> I want to, to be in camera. Council Faisal, uh, I have a book for you. In fact, for you, you'll buy three. Uh, <laughs> Council Anguria Joseph, uh, for you, I think you all the members in your farm, uh mm -hmm. mr okopa uh registrar cavendish university you organized to have yes. some copies um mm -hmm. honorable florence mutiable i will bring mm -hmm. you a copy uh, i see students yes. here who have been motivated africa chirenge all those ones so uh let's have those copies we shall take trouble to make sure that we uh, at least sell those copies as part of the contribution because we need oh, to appreciate people like you when you are still alive uh, so thank that we also learn things we can also be able to input in this country. Otherwise, okay. I want to thank you so mm. much for sparing time. I know it's late. Uh, we were a little mm. bit delayed by the technology. I've already mm. apologized to the Budonians uh, where they <laughs> said, I think we have come later and they were thinking, oh no, our image late, yes, they uh, are late coming is not part of us. <laughs> I've apologized because conscious. it's of technology, and I hope that uh, uh, also they will be able to uh, buy some of these copies. Uh, if you, you have any much. last comments, uh, you can mm. make them maybe just before we close. Mm. Well, as I said, I, I appreciate being hosted. Uh, I also appreciate the, pres uh, the, the presence of uh, distinguished uh, council, including... Uh, uh, Mr. Mulalida, the deputy director based in Lida, uh, who, who my supervisor for his uh, master's dissertation. I appreciate the presence of uh, Honorable uh, Florence Mutiavle. Uh, you said she's going to take one copy, but I know that her husband is a lawyer and <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm now. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from Tanya Innovation. You know, she's one of the. Uh, she's, she's one of the great supporters mm. of Tanya Innovation. So, even if she has got, she will find whom to give. For me, I'm looking at okay. how to get the fifty copies gone. Okay, thank you very much. And finally, normally when I end my whatever I'm uh, talking about, I normally refer to. Uh, these significant mottos, uh, the one of Buddha, since you kept talking about meaning that uh, although we have achieved uh, so much, there is still more uh, to be done. And then, of course, the Makerere, the Makerere okay. one, we, we build for the future. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finally come to the end of this show. 
I will still apologize uh, for the late starting and late ending, but I want to really thank all those who have been able to spare their time uh, to be on this show, uh, those who have made uh, comments, I think I've read your comments, including the students, uh, those who have listened all the way from uh, Dar es Salaam to our professor. Uh, I really want to thank you. Um, and in particular, I want to thank uh, Professor David Justin Bachivinga uh, for sparing your time and being able to share, that, uh, to share whatever that you have shared with us today. I am very sure that uh, we have learned from you, uh, and I think... Uh, picking from the sentiments that have come from the listeners, uh, I think this has been powerful. The good thing is that this is not uh, a TV show which will end here. Uh, we are going to uh, share widely um, what we have just shared today, uh, and I'm sure every Ugandan will have a chance. We also have this uh, copy permanently on Tanya Innovations. Those who have not subscribed, you go to YouTube, type in Tanya Innovations Africa, uh, then you subscribe. You'll be able to um, get reminders, updates, in case we have uh, people of such caliber uh, making such presentation. And the whole idea, what we are trying to do that, okay, we have a book, um, and please, if you want a copy, please come and pick a copy. Uh, but we all have these uh, submissions available. Uh, please tune in, buy a book, support such persons when they are still alive. For me, I will particularly be able to buy, not just because of Tanya. I think my son, I'm going to buy a book and put it at the, at, at the ent near the entrance. And whenever my son comes book, I tell him, <laughs> that is the man. <laughs> so I think uh, that would be motivation uh, enough for him. Uh, to yeah. keep looking up to you and we want to yeah. thank you so much for your time greetings yeah. to your family your colleagues yeah. and god bless you so much thank you and thank bye. you very much bye, yeah. yeah thank you bye bye good night